Hi, I'm Brian White filling in for Buck Lavasser. Today I'm with Jim McDonald, captain of the Fin Attic out of Cedar River. Last time I was with Captain Jim, it was non-stop salmon slaying action from the time we put the first line in the water till we reeled the last one in. Tonight, it's walleyes after dark. And while we're in Cedar River, we'll stop in at M&D Bait and Tackle for a visit with Ducky. If he doesn't have what you want, he'll make it. So stick around, that's tonight on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Folks, I'm Captain Jim McDonald, Fanatic Charters. Tonight I'm going to take you out walleye fishing out of Cedar River, Michigan on the Bay of Green Bay. We're going to be targeting uh, walleye after dark. Um, we have a tremendous fishery here right now as we speak. There are tens of thousands of walleye migrating into the area. They're coming from out south. The fish are coming out, are coming in from out deep. And the primary purpose, these, a lot of these fish are coming in to reefs at night to fish on gobies. And we're gonna be out there targeting these fish tonight. Now I know when you see a lot of pros talk about how to fish, they tell you to run some of your lures high, some of them low, use different colors, see what the fish want. Well tonight folks, we're gonna be fishing fin attic style. I'm gonna be flooding the zone where I know these fish are gonna be biting. We're gonna be using a whole lot of the same lures. This is called Finn's Day Old Muffin. This is a custom reef runner color out of uh, X-Tackle out of uh, Minnesota. And the fish just love biting these. So that's what we're gonna be targeting tonight. Um, before we go out, I'm gonna show you guys how to tune one of these reef runners. So you make sure if you come out here and try this, your lures are gonna be running effectively. Okay, folks, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna learn how to tune a reef runner. Here's a brand new blue chartreuse. Been a really hot color for us this fall. I'm gonna take this out of the package. My experience, I only get about one out of uh, three or four that actually run true out of the box. And it's critical that you do this before you leave the dock. Um, because if you don't, once you're out on your boat on the night, it's very difficult to tune these. So. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pitch this out here into the slack water and I'm gonna reel it in and see how this is kicking. Now if you look, this lure is kicking way up there to the left. That's no good. So we need to tune this lure. This lure was kicking up this way. So as you're looking at that, I'm gonna bend this split ring back that way. So I'm gonna use a pair of pliers here and I'm gonna grab a hold of that and I'm gonna bend it over just a hair. You don't wanna twist it, you just wanna bend it this way or that. So now let's try pitching this out and see how this is running now. Right there folks, you can see that's running perfectly true now. That's very critical. If you wanna catch these fish, 
Reef runners are one of the best baits and tuning just takes a few mere seconds. It'll help you avoid tangles and it'll help put more fish in your boat. Folks, what we're doing tonight to target these fish is uh, we're actually fishing for uh, walleye. They're right down here on bottom. You can see some on the graph here. But we're fishing uh, deep water tonight. Uh, we're fishing 30, 25 feet, uh, surrounded by deep water. It's a rock pile, a spine. It's about three quarters of a mile long. Go, folks, there's our first fish of the night. Fish, 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 fish. Right. Get that going, Justin. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. There's literally, I mean, tons of these different spots outside of the waters of Cedar River on up to uh, Beta Knock, all the way down to Menominee. I mean, there's hundreds of them. And uh, what I do is I figure out like this spot comes up to about 25 feet. Woohoo! So I'm running all my baits to run about 24 feet down. That's what we're targeting them. Get <laughs> you want this one right here? The top one? Your next buddy. I think there's a triple one. There's another one on two. Yeah. What we're doing here is we bleed these fish out and the fillets come out beautifully. It really helps out. These fish are coming up on these rock piles at night to actively feed and uh, they're feeding on gobies and you know these reef runners are a great bait to run because they, uh, they they get all the way down deep, as deep as you want them to go. We can, I can get down to 30 feet with these reef runners with really long leads. Not off. <laughs> Big one too, a pig. So uh, short leads, I can target 10, 12, 15 feet if I want, um, whatever we want. Pulling hard. We're seeing fish here. Uh, we're just coming back up on this reef right now. I've been doing a straight line along this. And we're just, uh, oh, yeah. you know, putting fish in the boat is very productive. One of the questions I get a lot is people ask, you know, when they're going to book a charter or come fish the Cedar River area is, you know, why do you guys fish for these walleye at night? And, you know, primarily the reason why we target these fish at night is they're nocturnal. And, you know, walleye can see very well at night. Uh, all the baits we're using have rattles in them, so the fish really turn on every night. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really depend on the wind and whatnot. There's lots of guys that do come to Cedar River 
fish this area during the daytime and are very successful. In fact, you know, there's a lot of major pro tournaments that are run out of the Escanaba area, Little Beta Knock. A lot of those guys come down to Cedar River to fish. You know, some days they do really good when the conditions are right. You need a good south wind or an east wind where this shoreline's getting pounded, it dirties up the water. Those fish will bite during the day. Well, the next day they'll go out, the wind will shift out of the west, the water clears up, the temperature drops, and those fish just will not bite during the day or not very well. As a charter captain, I'm not looking to just catch five fish in a day like some of these pros are. I'm looking to go out and get a limit of 10, 15, 20 fish a night. That's when the fish bite the best is at night, and so that's why we target them then. When they name a lure after you, it better catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins welcome. Kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. We'll be back on the boat with Captain Jim shortly. If you're in the Cedar River area and you're looking for some advice on where to fish or what they're biting on, or you need some bait and tackle, even if you don't need any advice or tackle, I would suggest stopping at M&D Bait and Tackle, located right at the mouth of the Cedar River. A visit with Ducky is alone well worth the stop. Uh, basically, uh, I had a goofy idea. I kind of retired while I got my neck broke a few times, had a couple surgeries, uh, lost a good job, and I told the wife, you know, i got to do something. Now what are you going to do? Uh, how about a bait store? He said, well, here, $1,700. Uh, start off with a till. Uh, I believe it was a cigar box. Had a lot of goofy ideas. And when I get tired of it, I'm going to Mexico. The fishing's really good there. Well, basically what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little quickie airbrush. Uh, and I just hit her with a little yellow, otherwise known as chartreuse. There you go, you got your first color ready. You always want to take and use your lighter colors first. Your dark colors will cover over the top of that real easy. You can start off really uh, the economy model. You get a, I believe, a Badger airbrush. Yeah, you can airbrush. You got $20 bill, you're gonna start airbrushing. And what you wanna do is uh, fine tune it. You can tune these things down. You can pretty much paint the eye if you really wanted to, but eh, I don't believe they're that fussy. And I guess the secret to this painting these things is a little goes a long way. Doesn't look like much, but uh, we're not done yet. You don't wanna overdo it. You wanna just hit her with the clear. There's the clear, and then, guess what? Now you got the speckles on it. Now if you really want to get to the point, like uh, some of the walleye pros, oh, they want a little more shiny, they want an uh, orange eye, yellow eye, yeah, we can do that. When this thing is completely done, you're gonna have six coats of clear, uh, shine like a baby's butt. Uh, yeah, pretty simple, nothing real trick. We're just going to do a basic, real quickie, uh, five, number six DC, otherwise known as deep cup. A lot of the guys are running DCs because you can run them slower. You'll notice on the back side, they've got a really uh, pronounced cup. And that, by the way, is your friendly dentist uh, tool. Uh, customized, I just made it a little bit bigger. The old paws ain't as good as they used to be. And we're going to lay it uh, on the lure. And you want to kind of square it off. And there you go, you just kind of, they stick really well. And you have a reverse pattern, uh, purple and gold. See, the river is uh, pretty well known on the circuit as far as, yeah, any color works. As long as it's got a little purple on it. Now, uh, some of the guys get a little fussy, so we have to put an eye. I'm going to put the old standard yellow eye with the black and uh, over to one side. Uh, and there you have a, a, your standard... Uh, Number five, gold. 
Uh, that is a reverse tape, nice and easy. What we have here is your harness. Uh, I, I probably over the years, I probably tied up ten, twelve thousand. Uh, strictly by trial and error, I found this out. You have to have the bottom of the blade at least a good half inch, three eighths of an inch minimum away from the hook. Uh, the walleye is going for that spinner, and of course the crawler. Uh, but he's going for that spinner. That's what's drawing him in, the flash. Uh, he hits the spinner. If that blade is down on the hook too far, he misses the hook. Not good. Not good for fishing. Uh, you see how that baby spins? You want to make sure you have your clearance. And you want to put a quick change clevis. Uh, your buddy's in front of the boat. He got three in a boat. You're sitting there doing nothing. What that will do is enable you to put the same kind of blade your buddy's got. Well, you can see uh, pretty much what I carry uh, up to a half a pound, uh, eight ounce uh, sinker. And I found out trial and error. You want to have one with a swivel. Uh, they don't seem to hang up as much as a standard snap weight. Your standard snap weight has just a straight eye in it. Don't seem to lose as many. And I run Power Pro. It cuts the water so good. And you run a church rubber snap, and that baby won't slide. I guess I'm fortunate. I do have a sport shop, and uh, I try them all. I am not going to recommend anything that doesn't work. We'll go into a, a different style sinker. Call a river sinker. Uh, just a little bit different. Uh, uh, it holds the bottom. Uh, donut shape. Uh, made to hold against the current. How well it works. Yeah, I sell a few every now and then. Now, you're fishing off the shoreline. You don't have the ability or big money like most of us uh, that don't have it. You're going to fish off the shore. Sandy bottom. Run a little pyramid sinker. Goofy looking little critter. Uh, comes a lot of uh, ocean fishing. People know what these are used for. You tie your line in into the eye. You pitch it out. When it hits the bottom, it ends up somewhere like that. You pull a little bit on the line and it buries itself in the sand. Uh, works very good for holding position. Around here, eh, you use them occasionally. <laughs> I became a charter captain seven years ago. My dad bought first big boat back in 1981. We started fishing Lake Huron those first couple years. And then in 1984, we uh, we found a place in Ludington to slip the boat. And my dad's had a boat there ever since. So since I was 10 years old, I was fishing all over, primarily, you know, fishing the big lake for salmon. I went to college up at Michigan Tech and I you know I fell in love with the UP and we got a triple. I wound up getting a teaching job in Stevenson. After I found Cedar River and started fishing out of here, that was it. I, I fell in love with this area. Cedar River is just a real unique fishery. Folks, that's why we run the bead on there, right there. See how that caught that weed for us? There's very few places that you're going to go out and have a world-class salmon fishery like we do. And then you just can't beat the walleye fishing that we have here, as you guys see tonight. I mean, this rivals any Lake Erie, Saginaw Bay, anywhere like this. This is just a phenomenal, phenomenal fishery. You know, here in Cedar River, we have a beautiful facility for boats. We have an awesome boat ramp. The marina here is seven years old. It's it's just beautiful. You know, we got everything a guy needs. We got a state park right down the road. We got the lighthouse pub right across the road from the marina. We got a bait shop right here in town. We got an excellent gas station here that's got all kinds of stuff that you might need. He also sells ethanol-free gas, which is important to a lot of boaters. And you could go out fishing in the morning with your family or friends, and then you could cruise over to Door County. It's only 18 miles across over there. 
You go spend the afternoon at Washington Island, get a boat slip there for the night, tour Washington Island. There's just a lot of neat stuff that you could do leaving out of Cedar River. That's just what makes it a really unique town. Got a tag fish. There it is. There. <laughs> so that fish was most likely tagged uh, either in the Menominee or the Cedar here. Maybe it was up from Whitefish River even, you know, up in Little Bay to Knock. So, you know, these fish migrate a lot. So uh, we'll take that tag off and we'll uh, record the length of that one. Just leave it on for now. We'll do it when we're cleaning them. We'll record the length of it. We'll send it into the DNR and then we'll figure out where that fish was tagged and how big it was. There it is, folks. It's about uh, 1030. We uh, have our limit of 20 beautiful walleye that we've caught here in a little over two hours tonight. Um, we're pulling in the rest of our lines. We're going to head in and uh, hang them on the rack so you guys can get a good look and see what they all look like, what we caught tonight. Here's what's coming up this week in the UP. May 15th is finally right around the corner, and that means the opening of walleye, pike, and muskie season here in the UP as well as catch and release season for bass. May 18th and 19th, it's the 18th annual Lake Gogebic Spring Walleye Tournament on Lake Gogebic. The Pictured Rocks Trout and Salmon Classic Fishing Tournament takes place that same weekend in Munising. And the UP Whitetails Membership Banquet will be held in the Ruth Butler Building at the UP State Fairgrounds in Escanaba on Saturday the 18th. If you've got something happening in your area you'd like to see on the outdoor calendar, let us know by visiting us at realoutdoorsup.com. It's time for the discovering tip of the week. You know how much them drift socks cost? Whew, big bucks. You get yourself a set of britches, bigger to better. Goodwill, eh, two and a half, three bucks. Take a metal little hoop, tie your economy line on, and uh, tape up one leg with Mr. Duct Tape. You still want to have water flow. Uh, your normal uh, drift socks that cost an arm and leg have a, I believe they call an apex, uh, it's an opening to allow the water to go through. Uh, so this is kind of handyman special. Water will flow through the one and it offers enough resistance with the other one being taped up. Uh, you get three, four months, the sun eats them up a little bit. Get yourself a new set of drawers, you're back in business about 10 minutes. Got a 50 horse Honda, I had to figure out a way to slow it down. Somebody said buy a drift sock? I don't think so. 50 bucks? What, do you think I'm rich? Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Good luck fishing, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Discovering.